everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We are diving right back into my playthrough of Nemesis Lockdown with part number two. Now, in the last video, we ended off right after an encounter with our very first encounter inside of the game. And as you know, when you're playing Nemesis, you have two objective cards. Initially, after your first encounter, you need to choose which objective card you're going to move forward with. And I've got some feedback on that and moving forward with one of those cards. We'll talk about that in a second. The one thing I want to mention from the prior video, thanks to Karim, who mentioned this in the comments, was at about the 35 minute mark or so, we went ahead and we ticked up one of these rooms and it was up to three. Now that's what the exploration token told us to place it as, but there is a solo mode specific rule, which is buried in the solo mode section. And I do apologize for missing it in the prior video, but it's important to note that anytime you flip over an exploration token and look at the number of times you can search a room, you're gonna have that amount and round up. So I wouldn't have been able to search in that room three times. At most, it would have just been two because three and a half is 1.5 and then rounded up is two. So I got one extra search that I shouldn't have gotten. But going forward, I'm gonna be doing my best to remember that one. And now let's go and find out which objective card we're gonna keep. Out of the two objective cards that I have to choose from, I'm gonna go with Insider Knowledge. This is gonna give us the availability to choose at least one character finishing the game with a larva on their character board or finishing the game with Knowledge 8 and sending the signal. Now this, in my opinion, out of the two, is gonna be the harder task. Now looking at the Proving Your Worth card, sending the signal and killing the queen, that's also tough right now because I haven't done or worked towards either of those, but down at the bottom, sending the signal and the facility being destroyed, well, we do have the cooling system already face up, so we do know where we could start the auto-destruct sequence, so that one's kind of already started. So you might be wondering, why are you choosing the tougher one? Well, I guess I'm a sucker for punishment, and also I'm kind of up for the challenge of seeing whether I can pull off the insider knowledge one. With that sorted out, let's head back into the gameplay and begin another round. All right, so I've got three options floating around in my head here. One is I can try to escape and have to take an attack from that and then run somewhere and hope that wherever I run doesn't hurt me worse than where I currently am, potentially. The other option is I could choose to stand and fight. Uh, and the other option beyond that is I could just say, you know what, I don't really want to fight long term. I'm just going to tase this thing and try to get it out of my room. Now, the second option in terms of fighting, I could also potentially use my nail gun to make an attack, which would run out of ammo after one attack, but I have a tool belt, and the tool belt's exactly what I need to discard in order to refill my nail gun, giving me three more attacks, three more ammo for that card. So I could make multiple attacks on this thing, and then hopefully kill it, if I get really lucky, uh, and I shouldn't actually be really lucky in this case because of the fact that the power is on. So this room is powered on, meaning that when I do attacks, I'm gonna be able to use the advantage die, which has a better chance of getting results that I wanna see versus the typical red die when power is out. Now, if you've played the original Nemesis, you've only ever seen the red die. In lockdown, this die is brand new, and it's really cool when the power is on your side. I'm going to go ahead and make an attack with the nail gun. It's going to cost me one action card, so I'm going to discard the uh, demolition card. I'm also going to discard the ammo off this card, so I no longer have any ammo left with it after this attack. And we're going to go ahead and roll it, the advantage die. And we're going to make an attack here, hoping for good things. Here we go. Got ourselves, okay, and that result there, the adult result, is a good result when you're fighting an adult. That is going to put one wound on it. We now go ahead and draw an intruder attack card or a night stalker attack card in this case. And we only look at the symbol in the top left hand corner to see whether it matches the number of injuries that the intruder has or it's below the result. So, I mean, we'd have to see zero basically in this case in order to kill it. So I kind of knew going into this, it wasn't going to kill it, but we can work our way up thanks to the tool belt. So I'm going to probably be using that in a second. Now this blood rage card that I just pulled up is going to get discarded. We were simply just referenced whether or not we were able to kill it. Now, this is one of the coolest factors of Nemesis is the fact that the health of the intruders is literally going to change every time you attack it. Some might find this annoying, but I find it really thematic because an alien is something that depending on how you hit it and where you hit it and everything else, it might go down really fast or it might take a lot longer to kill it. Every time you put damage on it, you're gonna flip a card over to reference whether you've got enough damage to kill the thing. It's gonna always keep you you guessing. 
Thank goodness we got that tool belt when we did. So we have the nail gun here. It says right underneath of the ammo limit that we normally would have of three, but we are completely out of ammo at the moment. It says discard a tool belt to fully load the ammo in this weapon. So we're going to be able to put three ammo or red squares back or cubes back on this card. This tool belt is going to get discarded. And again, just to be sure you guys understand this, you're not paying any action cards for this. You're simply just discarding the tool belt. In order to make the next attack, I'm discarding this search card and I'll also be discarding one of the ammo cubes behind. All right, so let's go ahead and roll the die and see how we do. We got the advantage die on our side. Hey, that's a good roll. So we got ourselves one hit guaranteed and another hit if we throw away a card, which I am going to do. And that was enough damage. Thank goodness for the advantage die. That's a reason I love that die so much, especially if you have the power on in the sector. I wouldn't have been able to kill this thing in two attacks without it. So this is huge. So this thing is going to be taken off or out of the game as well. It's also gonna be replaced with an intruder carcass token, which will land on the deacon room. And I'm gonna reset the amount of times I can search this room to be accurate. I'm absolutely going to go ahead and pick up the intruder carcass. We're going to place it as is considered a heavy item in one of my hand slots and I have the right hand free. All right, not bad, not bad. Now, the other thing I don't want to really forget before I run out of here, or maybe I do depending on my strategy in terms of taking wounds, is this quest item for the pressure washer. I can choose to activate this item when I'm in the room and I can do that by discarding a card, flip it over and I get whatever that is. I really want to do this. I also really want to get out of the room because I don't want to be hurt by fire. Uh, I can make both of those things happen. The one thing I can't really resolve is the fact that I will be taking a light wound thanks to bleeding. I don't have anything bandage wise or anything that I can do to dress this serious wound and flip it over just yet, but it's going to be top of mind going forward. I'm pretty sure you guys all want to see what's on the other side of that quest card. So let's go ahead, spend a card. Maintenance plan will be the one I discard in order to flip over and resolve the quest item pressure washer. We can activate this in the deacon room. Flipping it over, it states... It is a heavy item, as you can see in the top right hand corner. That is going to be interesting because right now I am carrying a carcass in one hand and a nail gun in the other, both being heavy items. I can't have three of them. So the carcass I just picked up is the only thing I could potentially drop in the deacon room that won't disappear. Basically, if you drop an item in a room, it doesn't stay there. It just disappears as if it was never there. Um, so the only one that I have in terms of strategy, if I want to keep this pressure washer, which I do, is to drop the carcass, which is okay with me right now because I don't know where the laboratory is to do the research actions I want to do and analyze the carcass yet. I got to keep looking for that and that's part of my plan. Don't worry. I'm also going to be trying to get out of the room that's currently on fire I'm standing in. So let's go ahead and take the pressure washer and we'll drop the carcass. So the pressure washer itself comes with three uses. I've got three cubes on it. It also says you can discard a regent card to fully restore uses in this item. So that would be good to know or good to you make use of in the future if I can find that. Or discard one use from this item to perform a shoot action against an intruder. And if you hit, it retreats instead of suffering injury. So this is a great way to just kind of get the intruders out of your path, out of your way as you progress forward. So when the nail gun kind of runs out in terms of trying to kill the thing maybe the pressure washer is really good when my taser runs out as it's a one-time use only so I've got a lot of weapons on me right now which is not a bad thing when you're running through this thing solo now taking a look around the facility of where I currently am if I head to the left by using my last card to move regularly and then I'm gonna head into this room here which is a two in terms of its tile now I know I'd love to find the laboratory in the laboratory by looking at the room reference sheet which is a large card that is actually two of them that you get in order to reference which rooms are where and also of which level because this information in terms of it being a room two or room one is not hidden information you're allowed to know this uh, and this right here is room one so there's a better chance for sure by heading off here to the right that I'm going to find a laboratory plus there's actually two other rooms over there I haven't explored yet and it's all around the isolation room as well so that might actually not be a bad idea uh, so let's go ahead and move one we're going to spend our last card here the emergency key you also notice that I dropped the carcass in the room I'm in and that carcass stays there we can come back and get it if we happen to find out where the laboratory is in the future and the other thing to note, which is awesome, is the room we're moving into does not have any technical corridors. So the one noise that currently resides in the entire game board is only for technical corridors. And we don't have to worry about that by moving into this room. 
Well, I mean, things just work out sometimes, don't they? There's not a single soul alive. The second I flipped this over and started recording, I immediately thought, well, there's no way in hell that anyone's going to believe that I didn't stage that, even though I talked as if it was going to be right there. It literally was right there, <laughs> which is awesome. And the cool thing about this is it's not only right there, it's also a green room. And as I talked about before, my serious wound can only be dressed with like bandages and medical equipment. So where else am I going to find something like that than a gray room or a green room? And of course, I could have done that in a deacon room, but I don't really want to be in a room with fire. So the lab laboratory works. Uh, there's also one search here. Again, if you have this and then round up, it still ends up being one. So we're playing that based on the solo mode rules correctly going forward. And there's a silence marker here. Every positive inside of Nemesis literally has a negative. I swear every single time something good happens, there's something bad happening right behind it. So in this case, even though we got a silence icon and that really got me excited, plus the fact I found the laboratory, the downside is I'm slimed. And because I'm still slimed, that is going to change the silence icon to a danger icon for the exploration token instead, which means if there was any intruders adjacent to me, they would come into my room right now, which would be nasty if I'd left that intruder in the deacon room and it was still alive, it would have come in. If there was anyone else adjacent in the same equal distance away, they'd all be dogpiling in this, into the laboratory against me. But because no intruders are currently out on the game board, noise is placed in every single corridor. So this is really bad because not only now I cannot careful move, but it's going to make going back to the deacon room and then coming back to the laboratory that much more difficult to get that carcass later on. At this point, I'm going to choose to go ahead and pass, ending off my turn. I have no cards in hand, but I'm not as scared, although I'm a tad scared from the noise around the laboratory. Uh, one thing you'll notice, I've placed a light wound on the track because my bleeding has triggered, being that I'm done my player phase. I really need to address that on the next round, and hopefully when I dig around in the laboratory, I'm going to find something that can help dress this thing, because if that continues to stack, I'm going to have some serious issues. So taking a look at our time track, we look for any CSS tokens. We would flip them over if they're pointing towards the time marker on the track. Right now, there isn't one underneath the time marker, but the time marker is now going to move to the next position, and just behind the main gate is a hidden CSS token, which will trigger on the next round, which will launch off a pod into or out of the facility, which is an escape route, but it's not going to really be worth it for me to do so or even go down that that road even though we do have a CSS control room open because I haven't even gotten my objective completed yet. So we're gonna go ahead now and move the time track down by one. You'll also notice that because I've turned on the backup power supply and it's still on being that this token is still blue, the next time that the power is going to drain in the facility, which at this point, the only area that has power is down in the lower section, the section three that I'm currently in, is going to be when we get all the way down to the next blue threshold. So I bought myself some time before that happens, which is good. Time track has all been sorted. We can now do some noise removal, if any. Noise removal is not happening because I'm currently in a room surrounded by noise markers. There's no other noise markers further away from me to remove. There is one still in the technical corridor, but this noise removal step does not touch that. Moving to the event, we have Blood Trace. It says in each section, move each intruder that is not in combat to a room with a character who has any undressed serious wounds and no action cards on hand. Wow, that could not better describe my current situation right now. Except there's no intruders on the board, so I get a free pass here. If there are several rooms to choose from, move the intruder to the room with the lowest room number. And then there's a darkness effect that doesn't take effect because I'm in a powered on section. So this was a great event card to get. Last step is the intruder bag development, and because the odds have changed inside that bag thanks to me killing off one of the adult intruders, I finally got a different result pulling from the bag. This time, I got a queen. Now, if I happen to have found the nest and was standing in it, this token would tell me that the queen is showing up in the nest right now, which would be very, very bad for my health. Uh, but in this case, because I'm not in the nest, this token goes back inside the bag, and instead, we're just going to add an egg to the nest on the research board. I keep calling it a research board, really it's the laboratory board, and there is an extra egg there now going from five to six. Drawing up cards for the next turn, I have It Should Work, Search, Rest, Clean Up, and Interruption. Inside of the laboratory, I absolutely need to do a search to hope, crossing my fingers, I find something that can help me dress this serious wound. 
The two items that I found inside of the laboratory are clothing and a region. And we know the region can actually help to uh, add more uses to the pressure washer, but the clothing is what will help me with the serious wound. So I'm going with that. I'm gonna go ahead and discard the interruption card to pay the cost of using the clothing in order to dress my serious wound. As I talked about before, this does not get rid of the serious wound. It still counts as one against the three that I can have at total, but it does flip it over and I no longer have to worry about its effect going forward. So I'll just place it off to the side. Now here comes some bad news for me, and it's because I need to correct something I mentioned earlier in the video that I caught, and that was the fact that I didn't go ahead and take light wounds for being in a room with fire when I ended my turn. Now how a turn works is a turn's basically inside of a round or inside the player phase. So inside the player phase itself, when you begin your turn, you're able to take up to two actions, and then when you take those actions, normally when you're playing semi-cooperatively, it would go to the next player, and they would go ahead and do their thing but at the end of that turn of two actions then you would go ahead and look to see if you're in a room with fire and you would actually take a light wound if you were now i was in that deacon room for a good chunk of time and i only left that room on my last action card in hand when i tried to get out of there so i wouldn't take a light wound for fire for being in the room at the end however the actual damage that I took while I was in there, while I was fighting the actual intruder, still would have happened, as well as also getting the pressure washer all uh, completed and everything else. So I should have taken, in total, two additional light wounds, which would actually bump me from the light wound position I'm in right now all the way to a serious wound. So I'm taking that uh, you know, bead off of the character board. We're going to draw a serious wound card and go from there. Really happy that I caught that before I got too far in. Otherwise, retroactively, that would have been really hard to deal with. This is still really bad because now I have two serious wounds. And remember, once I get up to three, once I take one more light wound, that's it. So I'm getting up there. Now, this one here is called Guts. It says each time you pass in the player phase, your character gets one contamination card. Now, in terms of passing, you're going to be doing that at maybe different intervals if you were playing in a semi-cooperative fashion. And in a solo play, like I'm doing here, you're going to be passing basically at the very end of the player phase so at the end of every single player phase I'm now going to be taking a contamination card which is really going to cause some problems for me and if you're not familiar with that what that is it'll throw a card into uh, my discard pile that will then go into my hand and muck up what I get in terms of a draw uh, but it also could potentially be an infected card and the only way to figure that out is to scan it with a red scanner. Now, getting back to the action here, I really need to get away from the laboratory far enough away that the noise markers can be removed during the event phase, right? So I want to move at least one space back into the Deacon room, and you might think that's a bad idea, but if I move in there with a regular movement and hope that I don't land the two, then I will move again to ensure that I don't take any light wounds from ending in there or also being at the end of my turn after two. Because I have three cards left in hand, I've already gone ahead and used two. So we're gonna go ahead and start our next turn here by going ahead and moving one into the room with fire. We're gonna go ahead and make a noise roll and hope not to see a two, we got a four. And just so you're aware, this is the card that I discarded in order to make that move. And now we're gonna go ahead and discard another card and move even further into the facility. You can see the four that got placed there is not a really great place. This is the one we're discarding now in order to move into this location. We found ourselves the Cargo Sending System B, and this is a malfunctioning room, and it has two searches inside, but again, we're playing solo, so just one. We're gonna go ahead and make our roll, and I can tell you right now this is super, super dangerous because not only do we have a noise marker in four and three for the corridor, we also have one in the technical corridor, which is one. So the only safe one right now is going to be a two or a silence. I think everything, or potentially a danger as well. So there's only a couple of them that can potentially save us here. We'll see how this goes. A two, oh my God. At this point, I'm gonna to choose to pass, and because I pass and I have that serious wound which around my guts, it's gonna give me a contamination card which will go into my discard pile. You'll see down below there, there's a bunch of red. Basically, there's a bunch of words in there, and the only way I can see whether or not this card is going to infect me, which could result in my death at the very end of the game, even if I have my objectives done and get out of the facility, I could still die just from a contamination. So this is something I now need to deal with, but I did keep one card in hand 
again, my rest card that might be useful for this. We'll see if I can make use of it in the future. So now we're gonna go ahead and place this uh, contamination card in my discard pile and move into the next event phase. I've gone ahead and removed the main gate or door so you can see the CSS token that is pointing to the time token on the track right now. So we're gonna go ahead and reveal this. If we happen to have been inside of CSS pod C, it would have launched right now, which would have gotten us out of the facility. That's not gonna help us. But at this point, we're gonna go ahead and move the time marker to the nine position. With that now done, we can do some noise removal. And my plan was to get as far away from the laboratory as possible in order to get rid of all the noise there. That worked out quite well. And you'll notice I also kept both of my weapons in hand, didn't pick up or trade out for the intruder carcass when I moved through. This is all part of the plan because if something bad is to happen to me where I currently am, which is very likely seeing as literally there is a noise marker in every single corridor and technical corridor attached to where I currently am, I'm gonna probably need all the weapons I can get. The event card this time around says Kickstopper. Flip the power token in the elevator to its inactive side. Well, good thing because it's already inactive, so that's not going to hurt me. Place a malfunction marker in all elevator rooms. That's not good. Remove this event from the game and reshuffle the events deck, including the discard pile. Well, that was really, really bad. Even though it didn't affect the power token on the elevator, it's already disabled. We're gonna be placing malfunction markers in every single elevator room, which is gonna uptick how many malfunction markers are in existence in the facility. Moving into the intruder bag development, we pull out a token and it is literally the same one we got last time. It's the queen again. She really wants to come out. I really hope I don't find the nest based on how often I'm pulling these now. This token goes back in the bag because I'm not in the nest currently and we're going to go ahead and add an egg to the nest area of the laboratory board. There's now seven eggs in the nest, that's a lot. And the good news is that we did not get the adult token from that bag because if we had of, we would have been in trouble. This is really, really nice because of the way this worked out. We do have noise in every single corridor so I can't carefully move next. So I'm still at risk of potentially having something happen in the next player phase, but it avoided an intruder from showing up, which means I can get going and hopefully jump back, grab the carcass I might lose one of my weapons while I drop it that's perfectly fine in order to get back to the laboratory and increase my knowledge going into the next player phase I have a rest card from the previous round maintenance plan demolition search and unfortunately when I reshuffle the deck the contamination card came into my hand which just clogs it up now it's worth mentioning again when I get to the end of this given player phase I can choose to discard cards in my hand so I can get rid of the contamination card back in the discard pile it doesn't get rid of it completely it's still in the deck and eventually will come back around again so you can see these cards become quite a pain as they clog up your hand Starting off this player phase, there's a couple things I want to do. The first thing is to rest, and I'm going to use this card right now. It says to scan all contamination cards in your hand and remove all uninfected cards. If any of the cards were infected, then you follow the infection procedure. And there are ways to basically, uh, well, once you're infected, you're going to have a larva show up on your board, and you're basically now it's visible, and then you're going to have to go and find some type of surgery or something else within the facility in order to help you get rid of that infection. So here's hoping when we check the scanner, I'm not infected. By slotting the card into the red scanner, you'll see that the word infected does not appear. Something very close at the bottom does, almost. But you look through each row to ensure infected does not show up clearly and spelt correctly. The next thing that I want to do is to search in the area that I'm currently in. There is the availability to search once and I can choose the green deck specifically, which I definitely want to do. Again, if you search in a malfunction room, you can do that. The malfunction does not impact the ability to search the room, only using the room action itself, which would be the cargo sending system and entering a CSS pod B. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use my search card here, which I can do in order to draw two cards and I'm going to select to draw them from the green item deck, hoping to find something to dress my serious wound. It looks like I found something very useful, a med kit. This allows me to dress one serious wound. Below it, it allows me to heal one dressed serious wound. Oh my goodness, that's really good. I could get rid of a full serious wound that I've already dressed in the past. <laughs> I wish, I wish I could have two of these cards right now. Uh, the caffeine pill says draw and reveal three action cards, scan all drawn contamination cards. If you have at least one infected card, place a larva on your character board. Okay, but that's not something I really necessarily need at the moment. The med kit is absolutely what I wanna take. 
The cargo sending system B, the room is completely void of any more searching options. The other thing to mention is I do want to beeline it to the laboratory, but I need to be careful in terms of how I move there based on how many actions I take within a turn. So I did two things in a row there in cargo sending system B. That would be the end of my turn. Another one comes around right now, and I have to play this in a way that's going to make sure I don't end up in the Deacon room uh, at the end of two actions. So if I had done, for instance, one action, the cargo sending system and then moved, I would have taken a light wound and that's why I stuck it out there for two full actions. Now we're going to make a run for it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use one card to move into the Deacon room. The janitor is back in the Deacon room. I'm using the demolition card and discarding that to pay for the regular movement. I have to do regular movement because all the corridors are all surrounded by noise so I can't do careful movement even if I wanted to. We moved into a room so let's do our noise roll. We know we have noise at four and three so I really don't want to see those numbers. Okay, we got a one. The noise has been placed and you'll see it's in the corridor that worked out so perfectly as I'm not even heading down that way, which means I'll be able to hopefully get rid of it so long as the power stays on in this area and I'm not adjacent to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and get out of the Deacon room, but just before we do that, we need to pick up that intruder carcass and we have to drop something. And this, this is where it gets tough. Now, as you saw earlier in the play, I was able to obtain the pressure washer and hold on to it, and I chose not to pick up the intruder carcass earlier on, but, and this is really because I thought I might actually need it immediately if more intruders showed up. I probably still do need both of these. They do different things. The nail gun's gonna focus on trying to actually kill something, whereas the pressure washer is gonna try to basically push them out of the area that they're in. Both of them are extremely useful. I'm really scared that if I get rid of the nail gun, it might be a while before I find a weapon decent enough to kill one of these intruders. And as we know, we can actually go ahead and kill intruders to take their carcasses back to the laboratory, which we now know where it exists, and it's very much close to me, so that I can gain more knowledge by analyzing objects. So that will lean me towards one of my objectives I'm trying to get to, which might be the option where I gain eight knowledge and send the signal. So for that reason, even even though the nail gun has less ammo, I think I'm gonna let the pressure washer go, which is really unfortunate because the pressure washer is really handy for just dispersing the intruders away from you, but I gotta do it. To me, the intruder carcass being in my hand and being able to take it back to the laboratory to not only be able to bring it to the laboratory and then analyze it knowing that we have a weakness revealed and I'll be able to take advantage of the weakness by analyzing this carcass is a huge boost. It will help me on damage, which in combination with the nail gun will really help me out. We'll go ahead and make a move into the laboratory with my final card in hand. Moving into the laboratory with my final card, the maintenance plan, we are now there. We're gonna make a noise roll, but as you can see, all the corridors around the laboratory are free of noise, which is perfect, meaning that we're not gonna to have to deal with an intruder, and this roll shouldn't be too bad for us. Now, the other thing that you likely noticed, because I used my last card to move, is I didn't use that last card in order to use the med kit to dress my guts, which means at the end of my player phase, I'm gonna take another contamination card. I am gambling that I'm not gonna get an infected card. If I had a chose to stay inside of the Deacon room and dress the guts card, I could have done that, but then I guaranteed would have taken a light wound. So that's my rationale in terms of, well, you know, hoping that I don't get infected in the future. I'd rather stay away from any more light wounds. I'm already upticking a little bit too much in that category. We'll see if it pans out for me. Anyway, here's the noise roll for the laboratory. Let's see how we do. A silence that is not good, that because I am slimed, we are gonna see noise appear in every single adjacent core corridor. It honestly doesn't matter what I do every single time I head back to the laboratory. There is always a ton of noise showing up. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually, that I use the strategy of trying to get further away from the laboratory to clear up the noise only to have it completely pile back up when I'm inside. Thanks to the Guts card, at the end of the player phase, I'm gonna take a Contamination card, place a new one on top of my discard pile, something else I'm gonna have to deal with in the future. Moving into the event phase, we take a look at the time track and where is the CSS tokens underneath the time marker? There are none, so we're gonna go ahead and move the time marker up one space. No thresholds that are gonna activate at this time. That's gonna do it, now let's deal with some noise removal. I ended up generating a decent amount of noise inside the facility and a bunch of it's actually not adjacent to where I currently am, so we're gonna clean up a few. Thank goodness there's also no intruders that are gonna attack me and no intruders. Well, I guess it'd be a good thing if they were out and they were taking fire damage, but that's not gonna happen either. Let's find out what the event is. 
This event is called Nest. If the nest is explored, place a noise marker in each corridor without a noise marker connected to the nest. Thank goodness we still don't have the nest out, so that's a positive. We also don't have darkness, so the bottom portion will not be triggering. Intruder Bag Development had us pull out our very first larva. All that happens here is we take that larva token, we remove it from play, and then we add in an adult token to the intruder development bag. So what's really happening is a larva thematically has grown into an adult. Going into a new round, we have jury rigging, we have search, we have emergency key, it should work, and interruption. Right out of the gates, I'm gonna use these two cards, discarding them in order to use the laboratory action, room action, right on the tile there that says I can analyze one object. And you know what I'm analyzing, it's gonna be the intruder corpse. You'll see the second position along the track of weaknesses has an analyzed object space. That's where we're gonna place this intruder carcass. Our knowledge also increases by three, which brings us to the first threshold, meaning now we can take advantage of the known weakness we had from the beginning of the game. This one, the fragile endoskeleton that says any classic and melee weapons attack that deals at least one injury deals an additional injury. So now my nail gun is doing even more damage, hence one of the reasons I kept it. Now over here, we do get to reveal the next weakness, but we don't get to take advantage of it until our knowledge marker gets up to five at the next major intersection. It says here, not afraid of the dark, always resolve the lower value of surprise attacks. That's really good. This also has an effect going forward on my glow stick. It's a one-time use when I decide to use it. I got this way earlier on. It allows me to use it when I have knowledge three to discard the card during my melee attack action instead of getting a contamination card and rolling a combat die. The target of this action suffers one injury. I'm now going to go ahead and use the emergency key card in order to pay to use my med kit. And this is going to allow me to either dress a serious wound or heal one. And I can tell you, I really want to heal one, but I got to get rid of that guts effect immediately. So let's go ahead and flip that one over. So that is two dressed serious wounds that we have now. I'll be focusing on trying to find more med kits in order to try and get rid of some of these serious wounds permanently. I really don't want to get up to three. That puts me at a danger level that is not good. Getting an extra light wound would take me out. So I gotta keep my eye on that. Now here's my next thought. I have two cards in hand right now. I don't really necessarily want to stay in the laboratory and have an intruder show up in that area, being that that is one room I want to be able to revisit and get back to without an intruder being inside of it. So I do have my taser still, so I can still make use of that in order to get an intruder out during some type of combat engagement. But I'm just thinking about it from the standpoint of, I maybe don't really want to be in the laboratory area right now, specifically at the end of my turn. I might want to keep on pushing and exploring more rooms. Also being able to manage some more of the noise markers around the laboratory could be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a regular move as I cannot carefully move. We're gonna move over to the right there and explore that room number one. The janitor just cannot stay quiet. He goes ahead and discards the jury rigging card, which was chosen prior to flipping over the room. The uh, janitor moves into the room, finding a cargo sending system A. The exploration token says there is two searchable things here, but really just one in solo play. It's a silence, but I have slime on me still trying to get rid of that. And uh, that's gonna cause it to be a danger instead of a silence. Silence is a really good thing. I really need to get this slime off of me because now we're going ahead and putting a noise marker in every single corridor that doesn't have one already. You can see how nasty slime really can be, but now we need to go ahead and do a noise roll, and this is not gonna be good. All right, so we're rolling for noise. We've got noise in every single corridor. I don't even, th I think danger might be the only roll that at this point might be safe to get. If I get a silence, I'm in trouble, and if I get any of the numbers, I'm in trouble. So yeah, this is probably gonna result in me being in trouble. Uh, we got ourselves a three that is going to trigger an intruder. Let's deal with it. All noise markers have been removed adjacent to the cargo sending system A. It's also important to note that it also includes the technical corridor, which is now finally clear of a noise token, but we have a friend coming. Let's go ahead and draw from the bag and find out who it is. Now check this out. We got ourselves a blank token. We have not seen this before. Basically what happens is the encounter is not going to occur, but instead you're gonna go ahead and place noise back in all the corridors. So including the technical corridor as well. So really this just kind of delays the uh, entrance of one of the intruders from showing up in this space. But that's a good thing for right now. This token also goes back in the bag. And if it happened to be the last token pulled out of the bag, you're also gonna include a new adult token going back in. If there was any available. Going into this next round, we have our search card from the prior round that I kept. Clean up, rest, 
Jury rigging and search. Right out of the gates, I want to search. We have one available search in this space. I'm gonna be looking for some more med kits. We're gonna grab two cards off the top of the green deck. This is a multicolored room, so I can choose. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get exactly what I wanted. I got a medical stapler here that allows me to dress a serious wound, but as of right now, I don't have to worry about that. I also have one that allows me to heal all light wounds, which would have been timely in different situations, but not right now necessarily. I could use it in the future though. And the other one is Analyze Toolset. This allows me to discard one object and discover one intruder weakness and gain three knowledge. That is really, really good for my uh, overall objective if I'm still pushing for knowledge eight. That is huge. And then down below it says scan all contamination cards in your hand and ignore any infected results. So I do have one contamination card. It's not in my hand though this going round. It's gonna be, it's in my deck right now that was reshuffled and put back together. So it's gonna come back through probably on the next player phase. So I think this analyze tool set one is the one to go for. Also, something else that needs to happen right now, you guys likely saw it uh, earlier on here a couple shots ago, is when the timer hits number eight on the time track, which it did at the very beginning of this player phase, this isolation room just opened up. How timely. Now, something I need to correct right away, no gameplay impact, just something I forgot to flip, but the second that the time marker hit the eighth spot, which was literally at the beginning of this player phase, the isolation room opens up. So as you can see here, the isolation room is available and you can lock yourself inside of this in order to basically shield yourself from some nasty end game triggers from dying, essentially. Um, and there's different ways that that isolation room can make good use of keeping you alive. I'll talk more about that if I intend to use it. One other thing I need to make of on my objective card that's really cool is that it says here at least one character must finish the game with a larva on their character board so the other one I'm going after knowledge primarily here for the bottom one because you only have to do one or the other but I could also change and pivot my strategy at some point if I get infected so the contamination card in my hand is good which is why I took it if it goes into my hand and I happen to use a rest card, which I do have and will likely hold on to for a full round so that when the uh, contamination card comes into my hand, I can do a rest action to see if I'm infected. And if I am infected, the procedure for that has me putting a larva on my character board, which would be exactly what I need to happen for this insider knowledge card to succeed then I might be able to make use of something else in the system. I do have the cooling system available where I could start the auto-destruct sequence. Now I have the isolation room open. I've got options here. And of course I could flip-flop between these two objectives. So I feel pretty good about this, plus the fact that Analyze Tool Set is another card in my hand that I can just quickly, if I can find the nest, get an egg, find another intruder and kill it and get its carcass, and quickly use the Analyze Tool Set without having to go back to the laboratory in order to bump my knowledge up to the next rung. So I'm doing pretty good now, I think. I'm going to go ahead and discard jury rigging in order to move from cargo sending system A into the isolation room. And now I just need to do a noise roll. All right, here we go. I always make it seem like the noise roll is so easy. It's not. It's going to be kind of problematic here if I get a one or a two, as uh, those have noise in those corridors currently. So a three and four is safe. Uh, a danger would be safe. And a silence, well, wouldn't be silent. It ended up being a danger, which would just put noise markers all over the place. So here's hoping... I get what I want to see. Oh no, I got a two. That is going to trigger an intruder. We have a friend coming to visit us. These two noise tokens will be removed and we have an intruder that needs to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one from the bag. And the one single token I did not want to see come out of that bag during this encounter is the queen. Yes, the queen has shown up. Just like I said earlier in this video, Nemesis will always make you feel like you're getting a leg up on the game and then something like this is going to happen and your whole strategy is gonna get thrown into the fire. And that's exactly what's happening here. Not only do I not have the objective card for killing the queen, but the queen is literally in the room with me right now. So this token will just be placed aside for the moment we have to check to see whether a surprise attack is going to happen. The good news is I still have three cards in hand, which is decently high. So because of this, we're going to flip over the token and see, based on being in a light section, whether or not a surprise attack is going to occur. Let's find out. Yep. Let's find out what this intruder attack does. You'll see the symbol of the queen on the card. So we're doing a cut against us. It says the character suffers one light wound and gets one contamination card. Well, the light wound is absolutely not a good thing. The contamination card could be a good thing if it can eventually lead to a larva on my board, which could then allow me to hopefully get out of this situation. But 
I'm getting a little bit scared, to be honest, that this is going to go south quite quickly. Thematically, this is incredible. I mean, the timing of the isolation room opening up only to find the queen inside just makes me laugh. It almost feels like everyone that was in the facility before the janitor knew the queen was sealed in the isolation room except the janitor. This is kind of hilarious in a way. So now we're gonna continue our turn here. I've got three cards left in hand. I do still have that taser. And remember when I threw away my pressure washer and I was going, oh man, I really don't wanna get rid of that because it'll help me to mitigate uh, intruders being in the same room with me? Well, the taser can help with that. It's just a one-time use, but it's probably useful to use it in this case. Maybe push the queen back into the CSS control room and have it start taking damage that way from the fire. However, before we use the taser, let's be a bit bold thanks to our known weakness, which can increase the amount of damage we can place on it. Plus the fact we're in a powered on area, we're using the advantage die and make some attacks with the nail gun while we're in the best position to do so. And then maybe do the taser at the very end, so long as I can hold on to one card, which shouldn't be an issue. So I've discarded the search card, which is in the discard pile right now. We're gonna discard one ammo off the nail gun and we are gonna be making an advantaged roll here, already knowing that if we land damage, we get an extra one thanks to the fragile uh, endoskeleton of this intruder. All right, hoping for a really good roll here because I certainly need it with this queen in the room with me. Here we go, we got ourselves, oh, that's not bad. So we got a hit, which we also know the weakness can now take advantage of. So that means it's gonna be two hits and we could discard a card from hand to make it three hits. Now this becomes a really crucial decision as to whether I discard an action card right now or not. If I choose to discard it, I guarantee get three hits on this thing, and then I'll be checking to see if I kill it. I could get a three. Three is a pretty average result most likely for the queen. I'm not sure the actual breakdown, but I believe there's cards all the way up as high as five, I think, for health. Um, so it might not be enough. Now, here's my other line of thinking. If I decided not to discard a card, I could make another attack after I check, of course, to see whether two hits would actually kill it, which is probably very unlikely, but we have seen some cards that are at two health there come through already. So it might happen, might get fluky. But the reason I could wait with that last Last card for or I should say the second last card to use for another attack is because by doing another attack if I get another hit I get the benefit of the weakness again stacked on top meaning I could maybe get it up to four which would increase my odds of killing it and then on top of that I've also got the taser which can do damage and also shove the queen out of the room so that would put me up to a five and I think all of those combined, if I go the long road on it, it will likely result in the end of this queen if I can time this thing right. So let's not discard a card. Let's place two damage on it and see whether that's enough. I highly doubt it. Oh no, deep regrets, very much regret that decision. It ended up being a three. I would have been able to kill it. Oh, that's gonna haunt me forever. Okay, so for now, that's okay. Our plan is still to play the long game. I mean, it hurts my soul that that didn't pan out the way I wanted to on the first hit, but hey, it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead now and make another attack. We're gonna discard a card in hand. The only one I'm gonna keep in hand is the rest card because I do wanna check that contamination eventually. So we're gonna use this cleanup card right now in order to do another attack. I'll discard the last ammo on my nail gun and we're making an advantage roll. Everyone that told me to keep the objective around killing the queen, well, it seems like you might have been right because that might be the path I'm going down now, which I'm not gonna get an objective benefit for, but hey, killing the queen is pretty awesome if I can make this happen. So here we go, rolling on it, let's see what we get. The same thing we got last time, so that's one guaranteed hit plus another one, thanks to the weakness, and that will get us up to four. I could go ahead and burn my last card if I wanted to get this up to five to guarantee I kill it in this space. But let me think about other things that I might wanna do with that final card. You know what, as much as I wanna hold on to that rest card in order to check my contamination cards, it's not as important as wanting to kill this thing outright and have its body be inside of this room where I can pick it up, which I could instantly use in the future with my analyzed tool set to gain more knowledge. Again, pushing me towards that objective. So I think I'm gonna go all in. We're gonna use the final card here. So that is gonna be three damage going on top of this creature. So we now have five. Let's pull a card and see if we've killed it. And just like that, we didn't even need the additional damage, but we were safer this way. So that is enough. The queen has been killed and a carcass will show up where the queen is. The carcass drops in the isolation room and I'll be picking up this heavy object. I have my right hand available and free. 
What an absolutely awesome, awesome battle that was. Being able to take down the queen, I did not think I had the cards and the power necessary to pull that off, but I did. And now I'm carrying her carcass around, which I'm going to head back to the laboratory in a future player phase to research this and bump my knowledge up by three, taking advantage of the second weakness that we already know is flipped over and I can't make use of it until I increase that knowledge. Plus we'll be able to reveal the third and final weakness and then make a push using the Analyze tool set card. I will hold on to that for later on if I find another egg or another in carcass at some point, and we can do a quick analyze on the go using this card, which is why it's so awesome, in order to get our knowledge up to eight. So really my focus now is I need to find the signal based on the bottom portion of this objective card. Now saying all that, I still have the back pocket plan of potentially scanning one of my contamination cards when it comes into my hand and maybe getting a larva on my character board which would also satisfy the top section of the objective card. So I still have two possible paths fully operational at this point in terms of options. So this is going to be interesting to see how this pans out. All right, so taking a look at the top of the time track right now, we have a CSS token that is there. We're going to flip it over to find out what it is. And it ended up being a no launch, so nothing happening anyway. We're not in a pod, but that no launch will take away from the options of future CSS tokens, which is good because I'd rather have ones that are gonna launch in the future in case that is an option for me. And uh, next up, the time token moved over red threshold as the pack backup uh, power supply is on. That's not gonna have any effect. The next time there's gonna be an effect for a power down, which will take down the lower sector I've been in for quite a while now, is gonna be when we cross that blue threshold, which is coming up soon. Now time for some noise removal. The two noise you're seeing on screen, the only noise that will be removed. The event that we got is Blood Trace, as there's no intruders to attack or take fire damage in play right now. It says, in each section, move each intruder that is not in combat to a room with a character who has any undressed serious wounds and no action cards on hand. If there are several rooms to choose from, move the intruder to the room with the lowest room number. We've seen this one before in the past and we're safe for now. We got our very first creeper pull from the intruder bag during the development step, and this is gonna have this token removed from the game and a breeder token is gonna go in instead. Going into our next round of play for a player phase, we have maintenance plan, it should work, emergency key, a contamination card, and demolition. And that, my friends, is where we're going to stop part number two. We are getting down to the wire here in the playthrough. Still not 100% certain if I can pull this off, but I do have two objectives and they're progressing nicely. The only things I'm a little bit worried about is having a larva on your character board in general is quite dangerous because if you get another one on your character board, well, then you die. So that's kind of something to worry about with that objective. Uh, in terms of the sending of the signal to Knowledge 8, getting Knowledge 8 is still quite a task we still have to kill something else and get its carcass back to the laboratory or use the analyze tool or find the nest and get an egg at least now the queen is dealt with so we know if we're in the nest we're not going to have to deal with the queen but we also have to send the signal and we still haven't found the room where we can send the signal with that one so technically it appears like the top portion of the objective card might be the easier one to get the larva on our character board, but it's probably the one that has, well, a real time crunch around how long you want to be in game with that thing attached to you. So that will wrap up part number two. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not part of the Patreon community and would like to support me and the channel going forward, we'd love to see you join there, getting early access to gameplay videos just like this one. And also we have our Facebook Rolling Solo Board Game Community Group, which is large and has a lot of conversations going on around solo gaming, as well as the Discord. We'd love to see you in all those places, plus Instagram, Twitter, and wherever else you are in terms of social media. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo